Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be making an artwork but I'm actually going to be taking some inspiration from this book here that I got from 3D Total. Now I did receive this book for free but I wasn't paid or anything and uh, they didn't tell me to say anything specific. I'm just going to use it for some inspiration and we are going to make an artwork as well. Having a little flip through here and there is a nice outline of um, like art supplies and stuff that you can use as well as some techniques here which is the sort of basics which I think is really good and they also have this here that says that you should uh, work on a tilted surface which is a great thing and I am actually doing that myself because I have a tilted desk. Now a thing that they actually mention in this book, which is something I often neglect to do, is um, thumbnailing and it actually explains the fact that by sketching out as many small quick thumbnails as possible, you can quickly see which ideas look the most effective and exciting uh, without spending a lot of the time on an idea that will not work. And this is such a very, very important thing which I often neglect to do myself because I can be a little bit impatient and I dive into a sketch and then I end up like, like changing the sketch heaps when I could have just worked on a small set of like a few thumbnails which are quicker to do and then when I'm actually going into my sketch that will be my final artwork, I have a better idea on what I want and uh, what I plan to do. So that's exactly what I'm doing right here. As you can see in my sketchbook, I have ruled out a few lines and I'm just working on a few different ideas for what I want. I know like rough idea of what I want, but I'm also just playing around with the posing and um, different elements in it as well. As you can see, it is a dragon and it is perched on top of a old uh, broken castle wall with some plants around it. And I kind of like messed around with the pose of the dragon a little bit and um, obviously the pieces of rubble and uh, deciding which one of these four I want to do. I ended up deciding on the second one, as you can see here. I just really like the pose and I feel like it looks more relaxed and calm um, and I just like the pose because it does look like a little bit more comfortable and it's sitting a little bit more naturally. So with that done, now let's work and uh, get into doing my final sketch, which is going to become the actual artwork that I do today. And I'm just using that small thumbnail sketch as a reference and I am redrawing it here on some watercolor paper, just with a graphite pencil. And I'm trying to be a little bit light here because I am going to erase this mostly uh, and, and go over it with colored pencils to be the line art. So with that thumbnail sketch, I did have most of the large details planned out where the tail is going to go, where the broken like parts of castle towers are going to be, and obviously the dragon itself. <laughs> but I don't have a big sort of foundation of like the details on the dragon, what its horns are going to look like, what the claws are going to be, uh, what's the texture of the wings, um, how am I going to draw the bricks and stuff like that. So I decided to have a look through this book here and it has a few ideas of what you can do for drawing a dragon and I decided I really like the look of those goat horns so I ended up going on Google and having a look at a few different pictures of goat horns that I could use as a reference for this dragon's horns and honestly I kind of found it a little bit uh, a little bit stressful because I just couldn't get the curls correct <laughs> so I ended up having to go and look on uh, Google for an image where the goat was like looking in a similar way and had a similar sort of curly structure on its horn and then I pretty much just drew out the same thing but obviously changing uh, the angle a little bit because of you know the space that I had on the paper here <laughs> and I ended up finally getting some horns that I actually really like and I like this because I'm actually like painting well, I'm going to be painting I haven't painted it yet <laughs> but I'm drawing a dragon with horns that are different to what I normally do I usually do like a more pointy horn and then add a little bit of texture onto it or maybe I'll give it a little bit of a zigzag but nothing too detailed compared to this like swirly uh like obviously 3D horn. So that's going to be very interesting later on when I paint it. So I've lightened up the sketch quite a bit now with my kneadable eraser and I've gone in with my other eraser as well just to lighten up some darker sections so that it was barely visible. And I'm going in here with my Prismacolor Premier pencils 
and I'm just adding in some line art. Now I'm not going to be too particular about this line art. I feel like most of it is going to probably be covered up by paint or ink that I'm going to be using. <laughs> but, um, and, and some of it might also dissolve a little bit in the water. I find that that does happen sometimes with these pencils. I kind of wish that it didn't though. If you guys know of a fully waterproof pencil, uh, please recommend that below because I would love to try that out. But yeah, we're just drawing in some details here. And as you can see, I have done a similar eye on the uh, inspiration page for dragons um, because I just really liked the way that the eye was surrounded by these layers of scales and I have actually drawn something similar in the past but um, I don't normally because it is a lot of detail and sometimes I can be a little bit lazy. But for this dragon I feel like I want to make it a little bit more realistic compared to the more cartoony dragons that I normally do so that's why I am going in with the detail for this. Now as you can see I am starting to paint this. Now I've actually decided I want to use ink because uh, it is October and Inktober is a thing that happens. I'm not really going to be participating in Inktober but I do feel like I want to use ink for the most of this month just to you know join in because ink is fun and I have a lot of inks that I could uh, use a little bit more and uh, I see a lot of people posting ink paintings uh, this month so I wanted to join in as well. So we're starting off here with a layer of a very diluted red color and I'm just putting this onto the areas everywhere where that where there is that broken uh, castle. Now it's not going to end up red in the final piece. I am actually, once that's dry, I'm adding in a layer of yellow and I'm just going in and adding in some areas which are a little bit more saturated in yellow and some areas that are a little bit less saturated in yellow. And I actually really like the look of that because it just looks a lot more vibrant when some areas are more red and some areas are more yellow. You're going to have that sort of color variation that makes it look a little bit more interesting compared to a block color. After this I have mixed up a bit more of a brownie color but it's still quite warm and it like matches that sort of reddish color with a little bit of pink in there and I'm just adding in the lines to uh, distinguish the bricks because as I mentioned uh, most of that pencil did dissolve a little bit in the paint which is fine because I do want this to end up looking a lot more painterly and a little bit less like line art heavy even though it is a bit of a shame that my line art is probably going to disappear a bit. And after that dried, I'm just going in with darker and darker layers of a similar color. And I'm adding a little bit of purple into there as well as I wanna add a bit of purple into the shadows to make it look nice and dynamic because we have warm yellowy highlights and then like purpley shadows, which is going to uh, push the like contrast. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go over the top and I'm gonna add in some plants. Now I actually decided to add in some very sort of leafy vines here and I didn't add them into the original sketch because I kind of just wanted to paint them down and make them look kind of natural and like a little bit messy because this place isn't very like manicured if that makes sense. There's a lot of overgrown plants and that's the kind of vibe that I wanted to get even though we do have some like little bushes here and there. We have these overgrown vines which are going to make it look kind of more interesting and cover up a little bit of that brick. I'm also adding layers of green onto those bushes to try and push the shadows a little bit more and um, each layer it gets a little bit darker and it like covers a little bit less of the bush until we have a very dark green in just little pockets here and there on the bushes and that adds a nice sort of like depth to it. After this I decide to mix up a little bit of my white ink with uh, some purple and we have a nice sort of soft pastel but opaque purple <laughs> and I'm actually using that to add some flowers to the um, the vines to make it look a little bit more pretty. So we have some little blooms over there which add a nice little pop, pop, pop of colour. 
So I'm pretty happy with all of those elements so far. So we're gonna go in and paint this dragon now. Now I started off with mixing a color that is mostly red and it's diluted a bit with some water. And then I've added a little bit of purple in there to try and get a bit of a magenta -y kind of color. And I actually really like this. Now, if I wanted to have it a little bit more simple, I probably would stop here so that you could still see the line art. But I feel like I really wanna push the realism just a tiny bit more. We're not going hyper realism or anything like that. It's still gonna be like illustrative and painterly, but I really wanna push some of those shadows and get a little bit of a grungy texture in there. So I'm just slowly building up the layers with that purple color. And then after I felt like it was, like I had enough of that purpley, pinky, magenta color, I started mixing a little bit of uh, brown that I had left over from the wall and I just mixed a little bit of that in there to sort of push the depth a little bit and also just add a little bit of like desaturation in there and I did a lot of layers of like just little flicks here and there to add texture for those like pointy scales and I just slowly kept darkening that color and adding in little textures and just uh, reaffirming the shadows that I had uh, like earlier on and I just kept pushing that and like just basically rendering out this dragon to try and get a nice sort of grungy like almost like believable texture of the scales and make the contrast really poppy and honestly I really love the look of this dragon I feel like he or she looks pretty badass especially once I started to add those really dark shadows around its face and just like under its wing to sort of like accentuate the highlight that is on top of the wing. And I think they look pretty cool. So for the horns and the claws of this dragon, I decided to go with blue because I was going to do a subtle blue background as you can see here, which is like a sky. And I didn't want to introduce too many colors into this piece because I felt like I didn't want it to be too rainbowy. So I decided to go with blue and then I sort of like desaturated that a little bit. And uh, yeah, here is the final results for this dragon. And honestly, I really like it. Now I couldn't have done this without the inspiration of this book that I got from 3D Total. So thank you so much 3D Total for sending me this book. The artists that worked on this book include Martin J. Abel, Valentina Remina, and Johan Egg. Sorry, I can't pronounce this. I'm gonna butcher it really badly. It's Johan Egrokrins. <laughs> I'm very sorry, I probably did that very badly. But that being said, amazing artworks in this book. And uh, if you wanna go check it out, I will leave a link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like and subscribe and uh, comment below what you think of my artwork. And uh, let me know if you're gonna do Inktober because I'm technically not doing it, but I am still gonna be playing with ink a lot more this month. So look out for that. Hope you're all having a lovely day. Please stay safe out there and I shall see you in my next video. Bye everyone.